Dayton Ultimax. The Dayton Ultimax. When are you going to test and review the Dayton Ultimax? Dayton Ultimax. Remember this Dayton Ultimax? Yeah, we all do. It's currently being used as my fan stand. I couldn't review the Dayton Ultimax because my A500 amplifiers that sit in there powering my front channels, they don't like any resistance load lower than like six, four maybe. Even in bridge mono, they only list the specs for eight ohm. And this has dual two ohm voice coils. That'll melt most amplifiers. My phase linear there, I was not hooking that up to this. I need this for permanent operation. I need an amplifier that can push that driver. Enter Crown. Now, I have some history with Crown. When my father and I used to set up sound systems in like commercial areas, we put in a set of Crown amplifiers in a bowling alley. Uh, 2400 series and a 3600 series. And the concept of heavy was redefined when those things arrived and I had to move them because they weighed like 76 pounds each and they were this exact thickness because this is a standard and they were maybe three times deeper. It was like it was hewn from a solid piece of copper. It was ridiculous. Fast forward, you know, a decade and a half and now this is Crown's newest line. And I looked for the, uh, the previous ones, the gray ones with the side thing on eBay, and I found a couple on eBay, but then I went, you know what? I'm not gonna send people a review for something that's gonna buy on eBay. Let's talk about the newest and the best, and look at that paint, just, that's how I did my computer case. I half-assed the black and it looked like burnt. That's fine. I should really have brought the specs up for this. We'll go there now. Let's see, we wanna look up the crown. 1502. This is the XLS 1502. Drive core, which sounds like a type of music, and I'm pretty sure now that I've said that, it is. Or is it already? I don't know. Two channel amplifier. How much does this weigh? Can anyone take a stab at how much this, hold on, wait. This is gonna be terrifi terrifying, but my God, the views. Oh, uh, okay, that's enough. That's enough showing off how awesome I am. 11 pounds with the cover off. It's a little lighter. So it's a little lighter than 11 pounds, 11 pounds. How many pounds? How many watts, Zeus? How many watts? Because you're always like, oh, heavy, big, heavy, big. This model, 8 ohm, which is, you know, normal speakers like you have on a desk, 300 watts a channel. Get the Italian hand going on here. You can bridge this to a single amplifier like I have in my living room. I have two of the A500s. Those bridged at 8 ohm are 600 watts. This bridged at 8 ohm is 1,050 watts. 4 ohm bridge is 1,550 watts. 1,550 watts, that's a lot. Now, to it also drive in stereo to 525 watts, 4 ohm, and to 775 watts, 2 ohm, which is how I was wiring it up to that, just in stereo, 775 watts per voice coil. Yes, please. Please, sir. I had to open it up. I opened it up the first day it arrived because I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I believe it, but I don't believe it. Of course, we're looking at a digital amplifier. Digital being like SA50 here. It's a 50 watt per channel amplifier. Look how tiny it is. You know how big 50 watt per channel amplifiers were before the time of digital amplification or T amps or class T or whatever the hell you want to argue. I will not argue the specs. I don't know the history that well. I just know that this weighs nothing and this weighs nothing and this will destroy anything you want. If you're one of those channels that just puts shit in blenders and crushes it with hydraulic presses, buy the bigger version of this. Excuse me, Ray. Buy the, 50, the 2502, which will, which when bridged is at 4 ohm is 2400 watts. And just hook up speakers to it and watch them just catch fire. So what's in here? We've got these heat sinks on these big vertical planes. We've got four of those. We've got an active fan, which only comes on when it's hot enough. And I have not pushed this. It's warmer now, it was cool when I got it. It's, I haven't pushed it to the point where that fan has come on or made any noise at all. 
We've got some caps here, two big ones. What are they looking at? I see CD1016, that's not the value. There you go. 200 volt, 1800 microfarads. And these are harder to read, 300 volts, and I can't tell how many microfarads because it's behind the heat sink. You got this little baby transformer. Here's where the power comes in. You got a, it's got a little peg that shows you it's 120. Here's your recess switch. You got a standard power connector. This is it for the power supply. Look at it. Look how there's nothing in there. There's four things. One, two, three, there's a few things. You've got auxiliary ground with sleep, sleep ground and status. So that's for controlling this remotely. Let's turn it around so we're actually looking at it upside down. You've got these, which are, what are you? Speak on connectors. You got standard speaker connectors like this, including for bridge. You've got the five-way binding post, which you can unscrew. And then, actually, where is that? Oh, my bad, it's here. I haven't had to do that. So the open, you screw, unscrew this, you got holes here, you pop the wire in there, and you close it, and you're good. Uh, I believe it might have had plugs in it that I removed so I could hook up bananas straight to it. Speak on is interesting because I put a speak on connector in my sub, my sub. The best is, this is actually what plugs into the back of my subwoofer. There's four whole wires that go into this. One for each voice coil. Well, two for each voice coil. One, two, three, four, there's four connections. And this son of a bitch will actually accept, because I hadn't planned on it, but this son of a bitch will actually accept. This is a superior connector to everything. So I'm gonna to get to take my wire, which currently has four banana plugs on it, which I was intending on plugging into an amplifier. I'm just gonna get another one of these, and it's gonna go, and it's gonna be like that. Yes, this one's got four pins. That's be the, this channel. Oh my God, it's gonna be amazing. Binding pose. Here's your fan. Here's your input side. Now, XLR balanced input, RCA input. And then you get a quarter inch or a TS, how many how many rockers are in there? Three. So you get a stereo on each side, but it's for to link or to output, which is interesting. I haven't tried that feature where I could actually plug in XLR ins and then see if I can get the signal back out through these. And that would be for if you're doing just a, a stack of these. These are these are pro amps now. Once you're out of the like the oh pretty home theater amps or pretty the then you're getting to like that. This does serious business. This is, you know, rack mountable. So you'll be able to link a stack of 15 of these things and run a line array like a mofo. Um, this interesting little snake looking thing is actually the power. So here's power switch here. And it's just extended to the board there. It's very little complicating the board. And it doesn't weigh anything and we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, let's wire it up. Now I'm gonna, an amp like this is not meant to have these knobs in the front be your volume control. You should know this already. It was the same deal with the A500. This is a power amp. These are to set and forget. A lot of times you'll go to a, a bar or a club and these will actually be removed and Crown will sell locks. So the professional that installs it, not the asshole DJ, you're watching this, aren't you asshole DJ? Because you saw a Crown amp and you're like, oh man, you asshole DJ are not allowed to touch this if it's set up properly. It's set by a professional, and I would do like that professional. I've done it a few times. But then I decide that that's as loud as this should ever get lock. And maybe I should get it and keep myself from being stupid. There's your crown logo. By the way, this, notice the front is pretty much just a giant vent. Because these, it will get, there'll be heat in this, but it's going to all just, just go away. Just go away. It will not be as hot as an old crown amp. We've got no power switch here, power switch there. You got left and right VU meters with a thermal light on top, signal light on the bottom indicating things. Then clip, negative 10, negative 20. These are a nice clicky, you know where you are with that. Menu preview select, because there's about, there's a couple of advanced options in this which we're gonna go over. And I'm gonna try not to electrocute myself entirely to death, but you know, YouTube, if you want those views, you gotta die on camera. I just screenshotted my entire computer, that's great. Uh, 
What is happening? This is just bad things are happening now. Come here. Come here. Oh, here's the power cord it comes with. It's very short. Again, designed for a permanent installation. You might want to consider getting a longer one if you're going to use it elsewhere. That's not even three feet. Here's the one I've got. It's 12 feet or something. Hold on. Hold on, internet. This is killing me now. What? What? What is happening? What? What even? Is that you? Oh, God. Z reviews. Best reviews ever. Look at all the editing I've done to uh, hide the fact that I'm incompetent. All right. This is just real life. Real life happens. Plug in my very nice... By the way, I will give a puppy. I will find a puppy and raise it. If someone could find me flat like this, 12-gauge... This was actually Horizon 12 gauge Mega Flex. I, my father had a spool of this back in like the late 90s. And I build these cables out of it and I love them. And the most I could find is 14 gauge boat wire and it's not copper. It's just aluminum. And I'm just like, oh, I bought a roll of it and it's not the same. Not, not what makes Zeos happy. So now we're gonna we'll plug in power last before I spit in it. We're just gonna feed this with my um, XDA2 over there, which, I could hook up this as a preamp. In fact, we will. We will hook this up as a preamp. So we're sourcing it from my XDA2 over there, my Emotiva. But since you're not supposed to use the knobs in the front to control volume, and since you shouldn't adjust the output, like to be super anal, you should not adjust the output of FUBAR or anything digitally. It should just be full tilt out to your DAC, which I have to make sure it's on zero. Go. And your DAC has to come out to an analog amplifier and it should be analog, you should control, you should squash your signal analog. So that's what I'm gonna do. And this is passive, so it should be fine. Boom, boom. Which side is that? Left side, left. Now the XDA also has balanced outputs, which I could somehow get to work, you know, around here, but right now they're just being sent to the airist. Are we ready to go? Knobs down, knob down, out for one. These are the RBH R5 BIRs, and they're fucking amazing speakers. They're not super hard to drive, which is gonna make this crown go, what, what are you doing with me? I have, here's, you wanna know the best part about this amp, and I'm serious. See this screen? it's gonna shut off. You see any power indicators over here, bl bright blue ones? They're shut off. You could shut everything off in the menu. It is so serial. All right, hold menu to get into it. Amp mode, crossover, input sensitivity, system and exit. Let's go to system. Display, sleep, lighting, security, information, factory reset, back. Let's go to lighting. Panels. Panels. Ugh! on off meters on off that's these that's so that's your that's your choice for the lighting and then display sleep which i have this set to shut off after 30 seconds one minute two minutes five minutes we're just going to shut it off because we're going to leave it on because i'm doing a review make sure i've actually got to that yes it's weird with only three buttons and that's next and that's previous which is down and up security oh no 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 no, no, no! Okay. Security. Off. Now, I'm blanking on what that does, but I'm pretty sure it might even be to lock out the menu so that people can't fuck with it. Enable. To lock, unlock, display, press, next, previous. Alright, so it doesn't let you accidentally hit things, or an idiot wouldn't know how to deal with that information. We see what this is. We see it's... it's the, the, the temperature in Celsius of the fucking channels is 33 Celsius. The voltage is 71, 71. The firmware, this is, this is more than an, let's just put it this way. The A500, I'd almost take it off my list if this wasn't almost double the price. Almost. All right. To get back, you have to go down to back. And now we're back. So out of system, input sensitivity. 
you get to choose between 1.4 volt normal or 0.77 volt high. Now, that just means if your signal is extra hot, which means, you know, the signal out of a good DAC, you know, I got the Mati Multi bit, I got the XDA, you know, own, that's gonna be 1.4 volt, it's gonna be fine. If you have something that's putting out a lot of voltage, which is basically, you're using some sort of amplification, like, I would even say that might be a case with like a, a, phone, a phone, if it's got a built-in amplifier, obviously they do. If you have it way up too high, you could lower the sensitivity and it'll just make whatever's coming into it, it'll just be like, all right, I'm gonna hold back a bit. Let's go back, input sensitivity. I'm going up, by the way, for some reason, just to make my life interesting. Uh, crossover, you get to pick crossover for channel one and two. Let's go to channel one. And you get to pick whether you want a low pass, a band pass, or a high pass. In the amp, built into this amp that weighs, you know, nothing, is a low pass, band pass, and a high pass crossover. And because it has that, if you don't know what that means, low pass means signal comes in and only low can pass out. Or high, or signal comes in and only high can pass out. Or band pass, which you could measure, do both sides. And for that, you're gonna put a low pass on, or I'm gonna put a low pass on, so that I could set the frequency response. In other words, if I hook up to my receiver in the living room, my receiver has a low pass filter. It says, take all these sounds that are around here and play them, and I don't have to worry about this. But if I integrate this into like this desk setup, literally right here, and I have this powering that subwoofer, and you know this powering these speakers, I could have this only send bass, to that or I get another one of these stack it on top and have this only send bass and have the other one only send highs think about how oh my god how much easier this is to do so here low pass go into that crossover and we get to pick two six I think goes down to 40 200 190 180 170 60 50 40 can you read I hope you could read. I don't want to have to scream this out. So low pass on channel one. And you'll know if you leave this on by mistake because if that speaker will just start farting out bass. Look how accurate it gets. 30 hertz, 31 and a half, 33 and a half, 35 and a half, 7 and a half, 40, 42 and a half, 45, 47, 50, 53, 56. It's just, go download the manual for this if you just want to read how insane that is. 106, 12, 18, it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I forget what the low pass crossover is like the limit, I think it goes to 500 hertz, 400, 455, no, I'm wrong, six, seven, eight, a thousand hertz, 14, 15, six. wow, where's this low pass filter? It's going way up. We're discovering, we're going on this trip together. So you could actually set the low pass to as high as 3000 hertz and below out. That's nuts though, back. So now it automatically takes you from channel one to channel two, so you could do it again. You can set that as a low pass. Uh, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna make sure I set these to both. No crossover, because God almighty. Amp mode, amp mode. This is the one I had to read a bunch on. Well, not really, but there's stereo, bridge, and input Y. Stereo is stereo, you feed it left and right, it outputs left and right, you're good. Bridge means you feed it left, it outputs left to or sub, or you feed it sub, and this whole amp becomes one thing. Input Y lets you feed it one signal, and then instead of outputting only one channel, it'll output both channels just in mono. And that's good if you're doing things. Like actually with my sub here, since I was running the voice coils, dual voice coil, I needed the left and right amplifiers to both output, but I only had one RCA input for signal, and that's what input Y does. It's just like putting a Y adapter on the RCAs. That's all that is. Oh, I got two going in here, pull this out, get a thing, one RCA into two, it's, it's, what it's, it's doing that internally for you. Leaving that on stereo, that's it. I've been through it all. Love these blue lights, don't you? Mm. So, it says crown stereo, you get blue indicators if you leave them on. You don't have to leave them on. I wouldn't leave them on. I love how I'm holding this amp in the air. I'm holding it in the air. It's 300 watts a channel at 8 ohm. Just eh, just hold it up. It's easier to look at. So our volume's all the way down here. Our volume is all the way down here. She's not playing. Actually, she's playing Peter Frampton. Max tilt. That's out. Here's this. 
I'm going to raise this to half, right? Raising our, our preamp to half. I'm gonna On the right output? Maybe I'm not on the right output. See those things. Gotta set my output. Okay, so now put this back to half instead of full. And then we'll start raising this up. And we're gonna, well, the way you should run one of these if you're doing it sort of like this, is you max tilt this. That's it. That's as loud as any idiot who walks to your desk can put it. Now you set the master volumes. And we could do one channel or the other channel. And you would actually do this on like the loudest, most annoying, dirty song you have. Afro Samurai, Nappy Afro. There you go. So I've just figured out, I don't know how many clicks we are from, that's zero, that's 10, that's two thirty, that's not three o'clock, three o'clock's there, that's two o'clock. So I've got these about two o'clock. I'm taking down another one more notch. So now you never touch those again. Those are done. We do the whole amp. You can get this whole amplifier. And if you remote switch it with that auxiliary, which I need to figure out how to make that happen now, so for my thing. Yeah. That's like your trigger input. I keep hitting all the keyboard commands. It's great. Now this is done. We're done ever dealing with this amplifier again. Put the top on, mount it under a desk. You're you're the DJ of your desk. This is all that matters now, because now that that's set, that's as loud as I can set it. No fan spinning, there's no noise, there's no whine, it's just sitting here. These are, these are slightly above room temperature, but I haven't been playing anything. Gungrave OST, which will get me pulled on YouTube. I ran this amp, I don't know which order these reviews have come out in, I'll probably put this one out first, but this is one of the amplifiers I used and approved on the Wu Wee for powering electrostats. Because it's so clean. Audiophiles love these things, like legit ones. Because to, to buy a 300 watt per channel amp that is audiophile, where it's, you know, aluminum cases and, you know, power conditioners that weigh as much as a car, and you bring it in and it's like, 300 watt per channel audio file amplifier, no shit, minimum $5,000. That's that's my, I've been to audio shows, unless there's other brands that are just, like Emotiva. Emotiva makes amazing stuff, and their amps, their biggest, their biggest mono blocks, I think are 300 watts per channel, and they want $1,100 a piece. And I would consider them for my living room, but they're $1,100 a piece, and that's insane. Now they're, they're not this style, they're not the modern tech, they weigh like 70 pounds. And you listen to this and it's like, why? I understand, I, I had my doubts like, oh, you really wanna get a really big, you know, ugly, it's, let's face it, it's not the prettiest thing ever. This is better than the previous version where it was like offset to one side, but it's not beautiful. And it's got, you know, this hardened plastic and that's it. It sounds superb. I would have... That got proved. I ran electrostatics off of it. That's... Speakers you can give or take this room... When you pl put a headphone on and it's being powered essentially by something like this, and you have no qualms about how it sounds, that means it's clean. Am I clean? Yes. Yes, you are clean and you're light, and you're mostly affordable. I think I paid 340 for this, considering what it's going to be doing mostly is that, and then when I'm not using that, I'm just gonna pull it off and I get to test things with it. Test things with it. Uh, I could have taken my Jotunheim, which where's my Jot? Where's my Jot at? You could have one of these, have a Jotunheim. The Jotunheim's outputs in the back, the RCAs are preamp. So you would just feed it from that to this and you're done. You, this is just one of these. It's just, a, the only thing it's mi missing is a volume knob. 
These, these don't count as volume knobs. You've learned that. These are just signal. You signal, you set, you forget. Any higher than that, and th when I do that, just, then things would blow up. If I went, now this is, now this is dangerous. Yeah, I could just hear something's about to catch fire. So we're just gonna bring that back down to like two o'clock where it was, and I love how it clicks and it's, the balance is, it's perfect because it's not turning a pot, it's it's setting a digital output volume. It's mad respect, yo, mad. Mad respect to this. And it's gonna be super efficient too because it's just so little heat and draw, I mean, What's the draw? Oh, I should have my kilowatt hooked up. Where's my kilowatt? Maybe in the description. Maybe in the description I will. Well, you know what? When I have it hooked up for this, when I do the review of the giant 15 inch Dayton Ultimax, this will be powering it through the cable I built. I could, you could put this amp next to your receiver and then just a speaker cable out to that. I will figure out what the wattage draws to this to make that go boom, boom. Because I'm sure here on the desk, it's, it's, if this is sucking 20, 25 watts, it's a lot. Oh, and by the way, don't run it with the cover off. That's, this is dangerous shit. That's, there is one 10 in there and I'm not a trained professional, but we are insulated via YouTube. So if I get electrocuted, you're not holding my hand. Let's try this. No one else dies. So I'll screw this back together. And it's just gonna, I mean, look how, it's not even deep. Oh. All right, this is a positive as fuck review about an amp that most of you are not gonna be buying, but let's just put it this way. At least I know where to turn if someone needs massive power. Clean, I mean clean. Even the A500, the one I love with the big Tordial transformer and I was talking about how I you know, romanticized the hell out of that. That still breaks up when you when you really get on it with some hard to drive speakers and there's always that complaint that some said that the pots aren't linear and you know the outputs get weird no one's ever said anything bad about these crowns nobody and since they're pro grade you're going to get that pro grade warranty of whatever a year probably a full year maybe maybe more i don't know i'm lying if i i don't want to lie and i don't know so i'm just telling you it'll probably work for a long time or it'll break immediately and then you're just gonna give me another one because Crown doesn't give a shit because they're printing these out like money. Yeah, uh, people are hearing this right now, so I have to not rage against them. I have to love the machine. Forget raging against this, I love it. They need to my new band, Love Inside the Machine. Patreon link in the corner. The Patreon money bought this. A to review it and B to do that. And the Patreon money bought that. And when I ship things out of here for uh, that I borrow, there's my Jotunheim. How come I couldn't see you? Was it there? I have to go back. Oh God. Yeah, Patreon link in the corner or the description. Wallpaper link in the description. And actually I'll link the sis. A for, I don't know. I'll link things. And these speakers are Thank you.